It is the 75th anniversary of the world's biggest military alliance. Heads of state of NATO countries are in Washington, D.C. to mark the three-day event, which is scheduled to begin any moment. The summit seeks to reassure Ukraine of NATO support while offering some hope to its war-weary citizens. The summit also comes amid China's growing assertiveness in the Indo-Pacific region. The alliance is facing one of its biggest challenges. Despite member countries pledging billions of dollars and delivering key military aid, the Russian military is making considerable advances in Ukraine. The latest airstrikes across Ukraine, including a children's hospital, has resulted in more than 41 civilian casualties. Blaming Kyiv for the hospital attack, Russia claimed that an air defense missile was improperly used, accusing it of setting the stage for Zelensky's participation in the NATO summit. With the war in its third year, pressure is now mounting on NATO members in spite of imposing severe sanctions on Russia of its aggression in Ukraine. The country has been upgraded from an upper middle income country to a high income country by the World Bank, indicating its resilience in the face of Western sanctions. Ahead of the NATO summit, NATO chief called out Iran, North Korea and China for supporting and enabling Russia's illegal war of aggression against Ukraine. He also hoped that NATO members would continue to aid Ukraine's war effort. His comments invited strong criticism from China. We urge NATO to correct its wrong perception of China, abandon the Cold War mentality and zero-sum game, stop selling security anxiety, stop creating imaginary enemies all over, and refrain from forming small groupings under the banner of mutual defense, and instead do something tangible to promote world peace, stability and development. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden is all set to host the Celebratory Alliance Summit in Washington, D.C., where leaders and representatives of member nations, in addition to those vulnerable to Russian aggression, such as Moldova, Georgia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, are attending the meeting. The summit also comes at the time when Biden is facing a tough re-election campaign at home and Europe is facing a rise of the far-right populism. While pressure is on Biden to convince his allies that he can still lead, NATO is faced with the prospects of its future if skeptic Donald Trump comes to power in November. It's everybody's day. And live from Washington, D.C., Voice of America correspondent Chris Cascio is now joining us live for an update of the summit, which is about to begin. Chris, what is on the agenda for this meeting of NATO's 32 member nations? Good early afternoon from Washington, D.C., and the site of the NATO summit here at the Convention Center. Boosting Ukraine security and addressing challenges from China are high on the agenda, according to U.S. officials. U.S. and its NATO allies have said that Ukraine's future lies in the alliance. And this week, the group will unveil concrete steps to bring Ukraine closer towards NATO membership. But they're not expected to formally invite Ukraine to join the alliance. Now, some U.S. lawmakers are, however, expressing concerns about Ukraine's readiness to join the alliance, even as the embattled country commits itself to internal reforms against corruption. Eric? Chris, but the summit's focus is not just on Ukraine and European security, like you mentioned there. NATO is also beginning to explore a larger role in the Indo-Pacific region. Uh, Chris, can you elaborate on that? That's right. The Center for Strategic and International Studies says that NATO allies are increasingly recognizing that the challenges facing them are intertwined with other regions. For example, 40% of Europe's trade passes through an increasingly contested South China Sea, with China increasingly making aggressive moves against its neighbors, while Russia's war in Ukraine has prop been propped up by imports from North Korea of munitions and Chinese dual-use goods that can be used for civilian and military purposes. As Assistant U.S. Secretary of State for European and Eurasian Affairs Jim O'Brien confirmed, Indo-Pacific partnerships will be a primary focus of this Washington summit. Now, NATO's four established Indo-Pacific partners, the IP4 as they're known, Australia, Japan, New Zealand, and South Korea have already become regular participants at these alliance summits. But experts say NATO is already cooperating with Indo-Pacific allies in the areas of cybersecurity, countering disinformation, and in space. Also, Indo-Pacific allies are helping to counter Russian aggression in Ukraine. Japan is providing arms to Ukraine, and South Korea is also considering doing so. 
Now, NATO has concerns over North Korea and North Korea and Russia's alliance over Pyongyang sending arms to Moscow. Eric. Chris, let's talk about the elephant in the room now. After his shaky debate performance, White House administration officials are brushing away concerns over U.S. President Joe Biden's uncertain political future. What role will Biden play at the NATO summit? Well, the U.S. is the host of this NATO summit, so Biden will welcome NATO leaders later today with a speech. And he's also giving a speech on Thursday evening and holding his first solo news conference in months. On Monday, the 81-year-old Biden said that he's staying in the race amid growing calls for him to step aside after that shaky debate performance in late June against Donald Trump. Now, he says all the data shows that the average Democrat out there voted 14 million of them voted for me, referring to those who have already taken place, taken, taken ballots in primaries. He said this in a phone call on MSNBC show Morning Joe on Monday morning. And the White House refuted questions that NATO allies have concerned with the leadership uh, at the leadership level um, of the 75 year old Lions because of uh, Biden's recent problems. Um, and John Kirby, who's a senior White House advisor, said, we're not picking up any signs then from our allies at all. Quite the contrary. Now, analysts say that while NATO leaders are indeed concerned, they're not going to voice any concerns publicly because they do not want to be seen as meddling in U.S. affairs. Mm -hmm. But that they do prefer Biden staying in office or winning re-election, not because they're pro-Biden, but because of Donald Trump's um, you know, strong comments um, that were seen as anti-NATO, you know, calling for countries to pay their fair share and threatening to pull out of this alliance. You know, so this should be a celebratory, celebratory occasion, the 75th anniversary of this alliance. But Biden's political situation definitely overshadows the proceedings here. Eric? We'll have to leave it there. I've been talking to Chris Cascale from VOA. Chris, thank you. Always good to be with you. For all the latest news, download the We On app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.